So the other day I had some zucchini fritters at a local restaurant and they were so good so I had to recreate them. Start by grating some green and yellow zucchini, then transfer to a bowl with a cheesecloth and wring out as much moisture as possible. Discard the liquid and then transfer back to the bowl. Grab some potatoes, peel the skin, and parboil 5 minutes, then run them through a food processor until you have a chunky texture like this. Add the chunky potato puree mixture to the grated zucchini along with some fresh parsley, onion powder, garlic powder, baking powder, flour, and some oil. Mix thoroughly with your hands and then start forming the little fritter bites. You could choose to air fry these or bake them, but I decided to fry them. I served them with a spicy lemon aioli and that was it. Enjoy! Someone recently asked if I had a black cod recipe, and I did it before, but I do now, so let me show you how I make it. I'm making a miso marinade by combining all the ingredients you see listed on the screen. Then I pour that over the black cod, which I've made sure to pat dry. Rub it in and only add black pepper and no salt because it's already really salty. Bake for 12 minutes and then broil for about 3 to 4 minutes. And that's it. I served this with some jasmine rice, green beans, mushrooms, and topped it all with lime juice. You can do this with any fish you like and enjoy. Show your vegetables the same attention you show your meat and watch how much you'll start to enjoy them. Start with a cauliflower head, then chop it into little florets. Season with oil, garlic powder, paprika salt, pepper, and some pecorino cheese. Toss it all together, then transfer to a baking tray lined with parchment paper. Bake for 35 to 40 minutes until fork tender and it's ready to enjoy. I've been seeing Capri salads everywhere, so let's make a more filling pasta salad version. Starting with olive oil in a hot pan, add some garlic cloves, add some pasta water, let that simmer on low for a few minutes, then add pecorino cheese. Season with salt and pepper, add your cooked pasta, then mix everything all together. And for the Caprice part, add some cherry tomatoes, mozzarella balls, fresh basil, and top it with balsamic glaze. That's it, it's ready to enjoy. So I accidentally came up with this recipe as a leftovers lunch, but it's so good that I make it on purpose now. So all I do is add some bouillon and samyang chili sauce to some water, bring it to a boil, and boil the chicken breast. Shred the chicken breast, and then I chop up some cilantro, green onion, and peanuts, and then I just assemble the bowl. With some jasmine rice, I pour a bunch of lime juice on it, the garnish, the shredded chicken, a little bit of that chicken broth, soy sauce, and spicy mayo, and I promise it's so good. Here's another stuffed chicken breast recipe, this time using a red pesto. For the red pesto, you're going to need all the ingredients you see listed on the screen, run them through a food processor until you have a chunky red pesto. Then you're gonna add that chunky red pesto to some room temperature butter and mash it all together. Then you're gonna transfer that filling to a Ziploc bag. You don't have to use a Ziploc bag, you can spoon it in, this is just more precise. Then I combine the spices on screen to make a seasoning rub. Sprinkle that over my chicken breast, a little bit of oil, salt, pepper. Press the seasoning onto the chicken breast and then fill it with the pesto butter sauce. Sear the chicken on both sides until you have a crust, then bake the rest of the way in the oven. Let it rest before slicing. I serve this with some pro couscous roasted cauliflower and fresh basil. Enjoy! Let's make crispy panko chicken with a red curry sauce. Start by slicing your chicken breast in half so that it cooks evenly. Then season with the ingredients you see listed on the screen and marinate for 15 minutes. Then I like to add some oil to the panko breadcrumbs to help these crisp up in the oven. Dip it in flour, then the egg, and then the panko breadcrumbs. Press it in firmly and bake for 30 minutes, flipping halfway through. And yeah, the chicken speaks for itself. For the curry sauce, cook down some red onions, some Thai red curry paste, some garlic cloves, and curry powder. Add coconut milk, then add brown sugar, oyster sauce, bring it to a boil, cover it, and let it simmer for 20 minutes on low. Add fresh lime juice, salt, and pepper, and that's your sauce. Then just assemble your bowl with some jasmine rice, the sauce, crispy chicken, steamed broccoli, and cilantro. And guaranteed these plates will be cleaned. This was supposed to be a sweet tandoori chicken, but it turned out to be more of a karai. Anyways, I seasoned my chicken breast, nope, chicken drumsticks, with everything they see listed on the screen, marinate it, then sear them on both sides until they have some nice color, add some yellow onion, water, bring it to a boil, let it simmer on a medium for about 45 minutes, and there's your chicken. I served it with some basmati rice, oat garnish with lime, and a salad. Enjoy! The first meal I ever cooked was actually butter chicken, and let's just say I cooked it for so long that the sauce completely dried out, but I've come a long way, and my family always asks for this, so let me show you how I make it. So I season my chicken breast with everything that was listed on the screen, and marinate it for up to four hours. Then I pan fry it in a high heat pan and only cook it 50% of the way through. In the same pot, I cook down some red onion, tomato, garlic, ginger, cashews, tomato paste, salt, and pepper. Then I add this butter chicken spice mix, a drizzle of honey, water, and some more spices. Bring it to a boil, cover, and simmer on medium low for 15 to 20 minutes. Let the mixture cool, blend it up, and then strain it back into the pan. This is optional, but will give you an ultra creamy sauce. Then I add the chicken back to the sauce, add salt and pepper, and let it simmer on medium for another 
another 10 minutes. Then I like to add coconut milk. You can use butter if you like. Simmer five more minutes, then garnish with cilantro and it's ready to enjoy. Nothing is worse than a bland quesadilla. So let me show you how I make these green chili chicken quesadillas. So the star of this recipe is this green Mexican sauce that I'm gonna use throughout the recipe. I'm seasoning the chicken with everything that you see on the screen, marinate for a few hours and then cook it in a high heat pan. Once the chicken reaches an internal temperature of 165, transfer it to a plate and in the same pan, add some oil, the green Mexican sauce, use that to deglaze the pan, add in some red onion, some green pepper, salt, pepper, garlic powder, cook it for two to three minutes then take it off the heat, dice up your chicken, add it back to the pan with the veg and there's your filling. Then I made a green sauce to go with this. I used a Bruce avocado, no particular reason, they just didn't have regular avocados at my store. I kind of just winged this sauce, so I'll list all the ingredients that I used on the screen, but the sauce was so good. And then I just assembled my quesadillas. I used corn tortilla, but I highly recommend you use flour so it doesn't break. Then I pop these in a panini press and they're ready to enjoy. One of the best vegetarian meals of all time has to be a mushroom barley risotto. So let me show you how to make it. Simmer some dried mushrooms and vegetable broth for about 10 minutes until the broth turns dark, just like this. In a separate pot, add some oil, cook down some mushrooms with the spices on screen, transfer to a plate once they're cooked, and do the same with some button mushrooms. Cook them down for a few minutes, but this time keep them in the pot, add in some diced yellow onion, some minced garlic, and the pre-soaked pearl barley. Gently toast the barley, then deglaze with apple cider vinegar. Once that evaporates, start adding in your broth. Add one ladle at a time, stirring each time, and then once the liquid evaporates, Evaporates, add in more broth. So it's broth, stir, evaporate, repeat. You'll do this several times until the grain is fully cooked. Finish it off with some salt, a little bit of honey, toss in some butter, take it off the heat, add in some fresh parsley, and then it's ready to plate. You can also top this off with some pecorino cheese, cooked mushrooms, and enjoy. Different types of feta taste different. So let me show you the best types of feta to use for the best feta pasta of your life using groceries I got from Voila by Sobeys. I'm starting with fresh seasonal tomatoes thanks to Voila, mushrooms, garlic cloves, olive oil, red pepper flakes, salt, pepper, and tomato paste. Mix everything until it's thoroughly combined and out of the two types of feta we're going to use goat's milk feta which is more tangy and crumbly and macadonian feta which is more creamy and not tangy at all Add both the types of feta to your oven safe dish with a little more red pepper flakes and bake for 40 to 45 minutes. While it's still hot, add some spinach, fresh basil, pasta water, and mix it all up until you have a beautiful creamy sauce. Cook the pasta to your liking, then add it to the sauce. Mix everything together, garnish with basil, and it's ready to enjoy. I've said it before and I'll say it again. 